Hey, what's up studs? Ryan here or MNR Productions and welcome to Ask MNR Productions episode 131, the series where I answer your questions. So if you have a question for next week's episode, you can of course leave it in the comment section down below and hit that like button while you're down there. This episode of Ask MNR is sponsored by Audible. You may have heard of Audible and they are basically the place to go for audiobooks, but they also have things like podcasts, comedy, theatrical performances, and more. As far as audiobooks go, there are thousands of audiobooks on there, and from what I saw on the app, there are like literally dozens, if not maybe like a hundred Star Wars related titles. So there's a lot of Star Wars on there, but specifically I have been listening to Thrawn because of course I watched Rebels recently and I loved Thrawn in that series. And so now I'm literally listening to the Thrawn books and it is wonderful because it's so much easier to just listen to a book than to actually take the time to read it. So I'm on chapter four right now and so far so good. I don't want to spoil it because I hope some of you guys will go give it a listen as well because if you use my link down below, you get a free trial, which includes one audio book of your choice and I chose the first uh, Thrawn book as my book and I would very much recommend the same one and start there and then work your way into the other two because it is a trilogy by Timothy Zahn so my link will be down below it's audible.com forward slash m-a-n-d-r that's audible.com slash m-n-r so I'll definitely be talking more about the Thrawn trilogy as I get through it because so far I have very much enjoyed it anyway Let's get into our first question from Diego. He says, ask him which Lego Star Wars characters need to be remade in 2021 Lego sets. I think it's very obvious which ones, uh, one of them's a remake, one of them's a new one. And I think they're the two most demanded characters I have seen as far as Lego Star Wars goes right now. And that is a phase two Commander Cody. Absolutely has to happen. Should have happened this year with the Grievous Starfighter. It would have made that set much more worth that 80 bucks. But hopefully in the UCS gunship next year, we will see that phase two Cody. And the other figure that you guys continually hound me on, like, oh, do you think this will happen? Can this happen? Will it happen? Is Captain Rex, phase two Captain Rex, obviously shown in the final season of the Clone Wars. And I think it has to happen in 2021. I think Lego is smart and they will get it done. David says, what is the ugliest Lego set you got? I love the grammar on that. Just like the very informal way he wrote that. Love it. So there may be uglier sets out there, but the one that came to mind immediately was the 2002 four Privet Drive set. This thing is definitely not winning any beauty contests. It's really, really rough looking. The Crimson Bronco says, what Lego set do I regret buying the most? Very tough one, honestly. I have quite an answer for this one, and my review of the set should be out tomorrow, but the 4483 ATAT. I regret buying it the most. It's really the wrong answer for so many reasons, but deep down inside, I feel like it's the right answer. And I talk about this in the review that is going up, but it was a set that I idealized. I really looked at that set for 17 years without having owned it, without having built it, without having ever held it at someone else's house, like in any situation, I'd never seen it in real life. And I idealized it and I thought about it and I was like, this is the best at, -AT ever. I love it, it looks wonderful. It's just gotta be the most immaculate thing ever. Think of it like a girl you had a crush on at school or something and you've never like talked to her and you're like, oh, she's cute and she seems nice or whatever. And then you meet her and she's got all these flaws. That's kind of what I equate that at, -AT to. I idealized it. I thought it was wonderful and I now own it and it's not wonderful. It's got a lot of really poor building techniques. It's age really, really shows and part of me wished I had owned it 17 years ago because I think then I would appreciate it. And I regret buying it because I wish I could have kept that mental image of perfection for that set for myself. The Three Heroes says, if Lego made old Clone Wars sets like season one or two, what do you think the clones would look like? I very much would like them to just bring back the old style Clone Wars trooper but I know that won't happen. There's no way. They will change it up. They will definitely change it up. Now, I just pray they don't destroy it like they did with the Stormtrooper. The new Stormtrooper is just terrible. And if they did a dual molded Clone Wars helmet, I mean, I would think it would be hard to destroy and make look terrible, but man, I wouldn't put it past them. So hopefully not terrible. And I hope we do get to experience that soon. I would really love to see that. The Rocket Dog with 101 upvote says, hey Ryan, why don't you try stop motion? People always ask me to do stop motion. I don't do stop motion. Not a lot of people in the Lego community, at least like that you probably follow, unless they're like a stop motion Lego person, they don't do stop motion because it's hard. It takes patience. It like, it's just difficult, time consuming. 
It requires a skill that I do not have. It requires editing software that I do not have. I don't have the space to do it. I definitely don't have the time to do it. It's just not something that interests me at this point. I mean, maybe five years from now that answer changes, it always can. I also haven't watched stop motions for like the last seven years. Like, I, I it's just not a part of my Lego life. And like at all. Brent says, how do you feel about Lego sports sets? I miss the old NBA sets. Would love to somehow see MLB sets, Fenway Park set. Lego sports sets are pretty hit and miss. I didn't like any of the soccer ones. I only like the basketball ones for the figures. Like Lego just doesn't translate well to making sports sets, unfortunately, unless they do minifigures. If they did like CMF series and things, it'd be great. The old Trafford soccer stadium, football stadium um, is nice, but like, I don't care about it at all. Like I don't care about soccer slash football. Um, so that's a problem to me. If they made Fenway Park, I'd be all over it because I love the Red Sox. It is also the most iconic baseball stadium in my opinion. So I think it would be very potential and the sand green just works perfect for that, let's be honest. So I think Fenway Park is potentially on the table for the future. I would love to see it happen. But outside of that, as far as Lego sports sets go, like I said, I just don't like many of them and I would rather them just do the figures. I think the minifigures would be killer, especially for something like the NBA. Triple P says, pretty stoked for the announcement of the McAllister house from Lego Ideas. What's your thoughts on it? It's one that I actually might buy. If it has like a bunch of features and such from the movie, I think I'm in. I've seen Home Alone. I used to always like it as a kid and I definitely would rewatch it when this set is about to come out because I will want to have that fresh memory. So I might buy that set. Not really sure what they're doing with the typewriter though. That one confuses me. Fab81 says, in regards to your UCS Imperial Shuttle review, you stated that LEGO won't be re-releasing the set for another five years, but you also recently made a rumor video dedicated to LEGO re-releasing the UCS Imperial Shuttle set later in 2020. So which is it? So you're taking part of what I said out of context. You framed it like I said that five years from now, they'll be re-releasing it. I didn't say that in my review. I said that I couldn't see it happening for at least another five years. Those are two very different things. Just be careful with the way you phrase that because people will take that as M&R Productions said there's one coming in 2025 and that's a fact type of thing. But I think it's very important to note that I literally filmed and uploaded, like I made that video over two months ago at this point. It was like late April. So there was no whispers of this UCS Imperial Shuttle 2020 rumor. That was just my thoughts at the time. And I guess it's been 10 years, right? I think 10 years is probably the bare minimum for a UCS set remake in my opinion. But to me, it just felt too soon. And so two months ago when I was recording that video, that's the thoughts that I expressed. And obviously things have changed. It does seem like a UCS Imperial shuttle set will be coming out later this year. And I may be replacing my good old UCS Imperial shuttle from 2010. It is what it is. Tim says, what is your take on Lego unretiring the 75222 betrayal at Cloud City in Europe this week, a 40th year empire thing or what? I would bet that they just happened to find a bunch of extra ones. I doubt that they started reproducing them all of a sudden. So that's just my guess on that one, Tim. I really don't know though. I don't think it's unretired for any substantial amount of time. I think it'll run out of stock rather quickly. I was very surprised to look it up on eBay and find out that it goes for like $600 in the United States when it was a $350 retail set. It's one of those sets where it gets retired rather fast. A bunch of people don't buy it because they don't like it. And then all of a sudden it goes up in value and people are like, oh, I should have bought that. And it's like, well, you didn't like it to begin with, but now it's valuable, you like it type of thing. So I would bet that that sells out rather quickly and it's gone, gone. They just unretired it because they happened to find some extra stock. Brett Inman says, what do you think of Cam Newton to the Patriots? Finally, a question that's not, what do you think about Tom Brady leaving the Patriots? So it's finally flipped. Thank God, it's been three months of those questions. This is great, this is wonderful. The dynasty continues, no days off. The reign of terror, wonderful, wonderful stuff. If he's the starter and the Patriots start 2-0, I'll be buying his jersey. Honestly, I may just buy it before that because I am just, I'm gonna buy into the hype, I just know it. Barbie Babe says, what's your favorite store to buy Lego from? Well, if it's a brand new set that I don't own yet, that's like just releasing, it would be whatever store has it first. That is just my general line of thinking on that. If it's a set that I already have and I wanna buy like multiples of, it would be whatever store has it the cheapest. I don't really play favorites very much like that. I just buy from either where it's cheapest or who has it first? It's pretty simple. Homer Fine says, what is your favorite planet in Star Wars and your favorite species? I would say like, just from like the overall aesthetic of a planet, I don't know, like Felucia seems pretty cool. Felucia's a pretty oddball planet 
and I kind of like it. I've never thought of what my favorite planet is, but Felucia, like, very much up there. And to tie in with my Audible sponsorship of all things, Admiral Thrawn Species, which is a Chiss, I believe. And to my surprise, in like the first three chapters of the audiobook, it is mentioned like a ton. So yeah, Chiss, I would say Admiral Thrawn Species is pretty badass. Just the blue skin, red eyes, blue black hair, like just everything about that is really neat to me. Not to be specious, of course, all the other species in Star Wars are wonderful and beautiful looking. TGB says, do you think Lego will make sets based on Star Wars squadrons? I sure hope so, because I think it's a great opportunity to make a tie interceptor and have it tie in really well to something that's really pertinent right now. So hopefully that will be seen. And there are other vehicles in there that I'm sure a lot of people would like to see. Fingers crossed we do see sets based off Star Wars squadrons, because we have had sets from Star Wars Battlefront, so it's another EA game. I know a lot of people want uh, Fallen Order sets. HK R12 says, what do you think of the new clone faces? So yes, someone in Hungary of all countries found uh, a couple Lego Star Wars summer sets early at their store. Very, very lucky. I'm really looking forward to the day I find them. But they did end up posting a lot of pictures of them, luckily, and some of the pictures they posted were of the clone heads underneath, which are notably now a different tone. And I would say it's more accurate a little bit to what you see with the actual like who Django Fett is right who that actor is and the skin tone that he is the face looks a little odd but I think it does quite well resemble the the actual like Clone Wars clone with like the cheekbones and everything so I'm just glad that the angry clone face and everything is kind of being moved on from at least for the clone troopers it's the end of an era it really is so fourth era of clone faces and it's a departure but it's definitely a welcome change I would say and you know whether I like it or not to me is kind of irrelevant because the way I've always thought of it and what I've always tried to put out there uh, to y'all when, when I talk about it is like, ultimately what's under the helmet doesn't matter to me because I rarely, if ever, will take the helmet off. Like it, like it doesn't matter. Like to like I honestly preferred the blackheads. Like it, just the simplicity of it to me was kind of cool. And plus it kind of makes sense to be blackheads because I feel like with the clone troopers, you don't actually see like their necks, like the tan of their necks because they have like, I don't know, whatever like black suit part underneath their armor that kind of covers it all. Adrian says, do you like the first Battlefront game from EA or the second Battlefront game from EA? I play the first one very little and uh, very recently on MNR Games, you guys can subscribe if you want to. I have been streaming and playing Battlefront 2. I know, after the years of y'all being like, you need to play the game, you need to play the game, I finally started playing it because it was free and uh, I have thoroughly enjoyed it. I must say, I have just really enjoyed myself. I got on last night at like 3 a.m. And I, because when I stream, I have the music off so it doesn't get copyright claimed. So I turn the music on because I'm just playing by myself and I'm just having a blast, man. The space battles are so much fun to me. I really love them just flying around, like really tempted to just play right now, but I have to finish this video. I got to do work. And it makes me really want to get a PlayStation VR headset for when Star Wars Squadron comes around because you're apparently going to be able to play that entire game with VR. And I've never experienced VR, but I think that that would not be a bad introduction. Commando Brick says, has the AAT grown on you? It has not. It has actually shrunk on me, if you will, because the guy who uh, got those summer sets early went and posted a picture of the physical AAT that he had built. And I'll tell you, it looks ridiculous. That cannon is just way too big. It's just way too big. It just is, okay? The AAT is so inaccurate in so many ways. The figures are nice, but like, the AAT is just not even close. And yeah, I, I can't, I, yeah, it definitely hasn't grown on me. And I don't think it will. I just think it's going to get worse when I actually hold it in my hands too. Grant Perry says, I finally got an appointment to get my hair cut after four months. And when she asked how I wanted it cut, I showed her a picture of you. How does that make you feel? Dude, that is so cool. That like genuinely, that is really like a, an honor. It's just really neat that you like, were like, hey, I saw this guy's haircut on YouTube. Like, here's a picture of it. I really like my current haircut, by the way. I'm gonna try to keep it cut short and not let it get as long as it did last time. Like a YouTuber and fashion icon. Apparently. Guillermo, hopefully I pronounced it right, says, why won't Lego stop making those silly hair dryers that they call stud shooters regards from Spain? So you're talking about stud shooters that are given to minifigures. I don't see that as a big problem. I see this a lot in my comments and maybe there's a silent majority out there that also is kind of in my camp of stud shooters aren't a big problem. And that's because, especially in the, the nature that they are given to characters, they're only ever really given to minifigures in battle packs. Like I was, I'm working on a video on stud shooters as a whole. And to me, it just doesn't make sense why people hate them so, so much. And I did the math of like the last five years of minifigures, 
And this only counts minifigures holding a blaster. So whether it be a regular Lego blaster or a stud shooter, like it's one or the other, only about like 17% of minifigures came with stud shooters compared to the, I don't know, 83% that came with regular Star Wars blasters. So I think there's a real variance in what people think and what actually is in the case of stud shooters with Lego. And I think stud shooters are an excellent play feature for kids. I just, I really do. And I think they definitely have a place and I'm glad that they're in battle packs and not in all the other sets. Goodness So Gracious says, have you ever tried to impress a girl you like by showing her your Lego collection? LOL, LOL. What do you think all of my Tinder pictures are? Arc Trooper Jesse says, how fast do you think the 501st battle pack will sell out? So obviously how fast will it sell out is kind of arbitrary because it will be sold in many, many different places. So it can't possibly sell out everywhere, right? Like your local target might have some, but the lego.com website might be out of stock type of thing. Hard to say, like, I don't know exactly what you're trying to ask, but I think it will be tough to get them. I definitely think that that is, is not a stretch to say because one, Lego's definitely having some production issues right now. And two, it has to be the most demanded Lego Star Wars set ever, right? Like, right? And especially one, maybe the UCS Money Falcon like remake was, was very in demand, but like for one that's so cheap and that more importantly, a lot of people are gonna buy a ton of. Like some people are gonna go to Target, they're gonna see the six on the shelf and they're gonna buy all six. This is gonna be crazy, I think. I'm very much looking forward to it. Commander Cody says, will Lego make another UCS Money Falcon in say 10 years? I find this question kind of interesting because as, as time continues to go on for Lego Star Wars, we will have questions like this answered. I don't see Lego making another UCS Falcon that soon. I think that this one is kind of it for maybe until 2030. Like, like I think there needs to be a bigger than 10 year gap for the next UCS Falcon. But I also think it's possible that the next UCS Falcon sees a bit of a downsize. I, I think they might go smaller with it to make it something that can fit in more people's houses, obviously cheaper because by 2030, you're gonna have inflation out to where if you basically sell the same thing now, it would be like $1,000. So I can see Lego trying to downsize it and go towards like a $500 price point at that time. It will be interesting to see what happens though. It's hard to say, but from my perspective, I don't think, you know, 2027 rolls around and like clockwork, we get another UCS Falcon. I think maybe 2030 and a little beyond, and then we're getting a better chance of seeing one again but in my opinion, it would be at a reduced size and cost. King Neanderthal says, I really love your desk and really wanna know where you got it from. I've looked all over for similar designs and can't find one that tickles my fancy like yours does. You are gonna be sorely, sorely disappointed by my answer here. And it's not even like my, my, my shelf answer where it's like, oh, those are ladder shelves. I built my desk. Like I built it from scratch, like at the high school I went to for like your senior year, you have to do a project. That's like your project for the year. And for my project, my like hypothesis or question or whatever you want to call it was like how to build a desk. It was like, I was going to learn how to do some woodworking and build a desk. And that's what I did. I literally built my desk. Now there were a few things I should have thought of. I, I wished I had made it a couple inches taller, but I mean, I built it like, like you, you can't buy it. Um, so yeah, I, I apologize about that. I mean, you can try to build one yourself just like it. That's that's about it. And that is gonna do it for Ask MNR 131. Again, guys, if you are interested in checking out the Thrawn trilogy or maybe some other audiobooks or podcasts or whatever you may wanna check out on audible.com, make sure you use my free trial for Audible with audible.com forward slash M-A-N-D-R. I'll have that linked down below. I would greatly appreciate it if you guys check it out and try it out because I'm really enjoying Thrawn. I hope to share that experience with you guys as I go through it. Like I said, I'm on like chapter four right now so very fun to listen to that audiobook thank you all for watching if you enjoyed the video hit that like button for the channel subscribe and if you have a question you want to answer on next week's episode leave it in the comment section down below peace out